basic editing in Adobe Premiere using the Insta360 EVO camera uh, in VR, in VR video. So the first thing you wanna do is go to the Insta360 website and download the Studio 2020 application so that when you install it, it will also install plugins for Adobe Premiere and you will be able to then uh, do editing in Premiere. Once that's done, take your camera, turn it on, and take your USB cord and plug it from your camera to your computer, and then it'll act like a card reader, and you can take all of the video files that you've shot from the camera and put it into a folder on your computer. Be sure to get everything. Okay, so now in Premiere, we're gonna make a new project, and I will call it something like uh, New, New Pro, how about that? And I'll hit OK. And it's then going to make this project window. And everything's pretty much blank. So now I'm going to import um, a bunch of video files that I've shot. So I'll hit uh, File Import. And open up this folder here. And the INSVs are Insta videos, and the INSPs are pictures or photographs. So that's how you'll know whether you've gotten a still or a video by the P or the V at the end of it. So I'll just take a bunch of these and import them all at once. And they're all gonna show up here in the media browser window, they may show up as a bunch of pictures like this. And if you wanna change between pictures and a list view, it's this little button here at the bottom. So you can switch between the two. Now, normally speaking, um, you could just take one of these and drag it over into the timeline and it'll automatically give you a sequence that's with the, with the settings for the, the correct size for this imagery. But we're gonna do something different. We'll do ambisonic sound, that sound that stays in one place when you turn your head. Um, and so we'll make our own sequence that has ambisonics in it, and we'll, we'll make a new one for that. So the first thing we need to know is how big these videos are. And if you roll over one of these, um, let's get a video, not an image. It will tell you that it is in, in the little window right there. It says 5760 by 2880. That's the size in pixels that your video is. So it's much, much wider than the height because it's two pictures side by side. 5760 by 2880. So we'll make a new sequence that's of those dimensions, but we're going to want to make it ambisonic so that we can have spatial audio. So say new sequence before I hit sequence. So there's new sequence. And in new sequence, I will then go to the VR preset, open that up, and in my case, because I shot in 180 stereo, um, I'll do stere stereoscopic. Open that up and grab the first one that says ambisonic. I'll set my own size. I'm not really concerned about these size settings. I just want something that says ambisonic, so I've got that sound. So I'll create that, and that will become the active sequence now. That's sequence number one. It will default to that. So now I'm going to fix the size. We can roll over it again. We can see that it is 5760 by 2880. So I want to go into my sequence settings and set that. So I go sequence, sequence settings, and here are my numbers, frame size, horizontal and vertical, 5760 by 2880. So now it's gonna be the right size. And let's make sure everything else is set right. Um, I want it to be stereoscopic down here, but I do want it to be side by side, not over under. And because I've only shot 180 degrees, I don't want it to be uh, the captured area to be 360, I want it to be 180. So now I can drag a video into my timeline right here. There it is, everything's the right size, two pictures side by side. 
and the number four is in all of my audio tracks showing that I'm at four channel audio, which means I've got ambisonics. If I want to stretch this video, this video is pretty short right here, but if I want to stretch it and look further into it, I can grab this little circle here at the right and that will stretch it open like this. And then once I've done that, I can then take this entire strip down here and I can move around in it like that. And if I want to make it smaller, I could stretch it close like that. So that will, that will act like a magnifier. So I've got one video going. Let's say I want to put another video that I wanted to uh, go into. And I could just simply drag that into my window and place it right next to it. And now I've got two videos. And there's a second video. And so these videos will play one right into the other. Because it's a little laggy here because VR kind of makes it a little bit laggy so it doesn't show up immediately. I can hit play right here, this little triangle, and watch it. Again, it's a little laggy, but there are changes. Okay, so there's the two videos. If I want to do some editing, Let's say I want to change their lengths. Um, I can just simply roll over the end of a video and drag it smaller and that will shorten it so it'll cut off some of the end. Or I can take my razor blade tool. I've got some tools right here. I can take the razor blade and, and sort of virtually cut these clips. So I can simply snip, snip like this by simply clicking on them and then take the selection tool right here select whatever I want to take out. Let's say I want to take out the beginning. I, I can select it. I can hit delete, my delete key. Let's say I want to take off the end, I can do the same. And then if I want to slide this video over to the left, because right now if I go over to the left, it's just black and I don't necessarily want that black in the beginning of my video. I can right click in that black area and say ripple delete, and that will slide it over automatically to the beginning. Alternatively, you can also just pick these up. I can select them by drawing a little box around all of them. And then um, I still have my selector. I can really drag them anywhere I want, including to the beginning. Uh, the ripple delete just sort of does it automatically and gets it nice and tight and perfect so you don't have to, um, you know, you might be a little off or something if you're doing it manually. If you want to take other video tracks, um, you can put them over the top like this on a new track. And whatever track is on top, that's the one that you're going to see. And it's, in, it's going to hide the ones that are on the bottom. And there's also audio tracks that are coming in with the video. In order to mix the audio, you can use the uh, mixer, track mixer window. Um, I'm in the editing set right here. All of these buttons up here are different window sets. So all these windows are available at any time. You can always go window and get whatever window you want. Uh, but these are sets of windows that they've kind of made for you so that it makes it a little easier to get to things. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm in the editing set. So one of the things that's appearing in my editing set, I've got an audio track mixer right here. You can also find it in Windows, the audio track mixer. The audio track mixer will have an audio track that will correspond to the audio tracks that you have here in your timeline. So I've got A1, A2, A3. And so here I've got audio one, A1, A2, A3. And you've got left and right panning on these tracks. So you can make, be, make it be in the left ear or the right ear or any combination thereof. And I can also control the volume with these faders up and down as I play this track. So right now there's just kind of some background noise and the click of the camera. You can also bring in some waveforms that uh, are just audio waves that you've recorded with the microphone. You can do it either with QuickTime or you can record with your phone and then take it off your phone. So I'm going to import some audio waves. So here's a few that I've made. So 
So here's one and I can drag that in to a track. I could drag another one in and you can then build um, some audio waves if you want to work with sound. If you run out of tracks, like right now, let's say I want to put this one on a track underneath so I can mix it. I have no track down there. I can simply right click in my track area right here and I can say add track. So that's with a right click and it'll say, well, what do you want? Uh, I could add a video track. I can add an audio track. In this case, I want zero video tracks and I want one audio track uh, or maybe two. Let's say I'll say two audio tracks. And so it will then add a couple more tracks and it will show up also in the mixer window over here whenever you add a track. And so now I can put these waves in their own tracks if I wish. And you can use the razor blade tool if you want to cut any of these waves. Select them, move them around. Do anything you want, just like you would anything else. Okay, so that's how you can put your tracks together, uh, both video and audio. Now let's say you want to have a transition between your video tracks, because right now my transition is just simply going from one to the next um, without any kind of a fade or anything like that. If you do want to do a fade, you can go to your effects grouping up here to reveal your effects. And the effects are here on the upper right. And let's open up the video transitions because I want to do a fade between two video clips. And I can pick one of these. I could pick something like uh, dissolve or something like that. I could do a cross dissolve. And I could simply drag that effect into the transition area. So in, in between the two clips, it will then, I'll open this up so you can see it better. You can then see that it has a transition now and it will do a cross dissolve. So you can see now I'm in the middle of the transition. It is cross fading between the two clips. So it's not just a straight slice. Okay, so perhaps you want to do some titling. Maybe you want to put a title at the end of this or maybe even some text over the top of this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my playhead at the end of it. And let's say I'm going to do some titling at the end and we can drag it wherever we want. And so to do titling, it's pretty easy here in the, uh, the tools that are here. You just pick the one that says T because that's your type tool. And then you click anywhere on your screen, pick one side and type whatever you want. And it defaults to about that big right there. And it also makes a clip that is the type. And it's a, right now it's a clip that ex it exists on its own. See, it says whatever I want right here in the blackness. Or if I drag it on top of my video, it will then appear on top of my video. And it, is, it also extends out into the blackness. So it defaults to five seconds, but you can make it any length you want. You can pull it longer this way. You can pull it longer this way, either way you want. You can clip it. You can just make it anything. It just, it just gives you five seconds to kind of start out. And then you can make it whatever length you feel you want it to appear. If you want to change the text, I can go into, let me go back to editing, my editing group. And I'll go to my effects control window right here. There's effects controls. Again, all of these windows, if they're not visible, you can always go to window and go after them separately. Anything that's checked is something that's going to be available at the moment. So here's my effects control. And because I've made some text, I will then have this in my effects control text. And I can change the text to whatever I want. I have to select it. So still with my uh, text tool, 
I'm going to roll over it and select it. It's being a little bit slow there, but there it is selected now. And so now I can do something like um, change the size. Once it's selected, I can change the size with this slider right here. Looks like I didn't get the T, so it's whatever I want with a little T. Uh, I could change the font just like you would for um, like Microsoft Word or something like that change the font, you could change whether it is going to be um, bold or whether you want it to left justified or right justified or whatever you want it to be. And that's how you can control the text. Now the thing is once you have this text there, you see that it's only over one side as we put it. So we have to make it appear over both windows. It has to be just right so that when you look through in stereo on your headset, you will see it appear and it won't make your eyes go funny. So there's an effect that Premiere will give you that will make that happen pretty automatically. You just got to tell it what kind of video you're doing. So I'm, I'm going to go to my effects and I'm going to look in not video transitions, but I'm going to look in video effects and down here or somewhere in the middle, there are some immersive video effects and those are the ones that are specific for VR. So I'm going to open that up and the one I'm going to grab is called plane the sphere. So what that does, that takes a picture plane and you can do this with a picture or text or whatever you want. Anything that's just a flat plane and it will spherize it. It will make it, um, distorted like the rest of the video so that it appears properly in a headset and you can also make it appear on both sides in stereo. So you simply grab that effect and drag and drop it over your text. And automatically mine just made it, made it smaller and it put it on both sides. Now we can control this. So once it's there, I'm, again, I'm going to go to my editing group. And when you put in a, any kind of an effect, it's going to be added to the basic list of things that you can do here. So there is my VR plane, the sphere. If I want to make it bigger, I can do the scaling. Make that larger. And I'm, the first thing I want to do actually is it says auto VR properties. Most of the time it doesn't set this right. So I'm going to uncheck the auto and uh, well, here it did it right. In this case, stereoscopic, stereoscopic side by side. Uh, very often it will default to monoscopic and then you'll have to set that. So you've got monoscopic, stereoscopic over under and then side by side. So in this case, it did figure it out. Uh, most of the time it doesn't do such a great job. So you can scale it, you can move it in vertical, you can move it in horizontal. Um, you can rotate it different ways. So you can play with these and get it as you wish to appear where you want it to be. And it might be useful to see this better. I'm gonna open up text again. and reselect it. This is the original text before it was affected. And maybe I'm gonna make it be a different color so it's more visible. See if I can make it like red. Yeah, there now it's red, it's more visible. So that's here in the appearance fill color. And so now it can be seen a little bit better.
So there is text, you have video editing, you have sound and sound editing. If you want to have something move across the screen over time, you can always animate pretty much anything. So this text, for example, if I wanted it to move from left to right, I could open up and I'm again, once here, I'm, I'm in the effects controls. I can open up the motion and any, any video track you have is gonna have these controls. And I can twirl open the motion and I've got position, I've got scale, so scale will change size. I just put like a different number there, 150 for example, make it the whole thing bigger. And I could change its position, change these numbers. And so there I've made this a different number here. And so now it's more over to my left. Now, if I want to make it move over time from left to right, I can put my playhead where I want it to start, let's say right here. And any, anything that has a little clock symbol like this, a little icon, means that you can animate it over time and it'll create keyframes. So it'll move between one keyframe and the other. So let's say I wanna animate its position. I will click on the little clock and that will create a little keyframe right there, a little diamond, and that's the keyframe. And then I can move my playhead to a new area of time. And then if I change the numbers here, let's say because I'm moving it, it will automatically make a new keyframe. So it does this automatically. And now when I move the playhead, it also moves from left to right between the two keyframes. So anything that has a clock can be animated. I can animate the size, I can animate the rotation. Um, anytime you see that clock, you know that if you put the playhead at one spot and turn on the clock and then put the playhead at another spot and make a change, it will make these keyframes and move between those keyframes and do some animation. So now the only thing we have to worry about now is how to export this properly so it can play in a headset or on YouTube or wherever you want to put it. So I'm going to click my timeline window and make sure I've got this blue box around it. I'm going to say File, Export, Media. Here's the exporter window. I'll give it a better name maybe than sequence one. So if you click on the name of it, you can make it whatever name you want. So let's say I'm gonna call it a sample. And hit save. And the format I want this to be is H264. And I obviously wanna export the audio and the video. So let's check some of the settings. Here's a video. So this is already has a check that it's gonna be whatever size it's been. It's not gonna change it, which is great. I'm just gonna kind of roll this down. I'd like to render at the maximum depth. I think that's a good idea. Keep going down. The bit rate, I'm gonna raise a little bit so that it has a little better resolution. So it's not so pixely. So I go to approximately 50 and that should do it. It's probably a little overkill even. And that will just pack more data in there. If you go too high, it won't play because it'll, it'll be too, too much data for your headset. And then I wanna make sure that video is VR is checked. It probably will be. That it's stereoscopic side by side and 180 by 180. If you shot in 360, if you folded the camera, it would be 360 by 180. And it would not be stereoscopic side by side, it'd just be monoscopic. So that, that was, that's how you would set a 360. Uh, make sure you use maximum render qualities checked, that all looks good. And now I just wanna check the audio to make sure it stays with those ambisonics because it won't default generally to that. So I'm gonna click over here to audio 
Everything here looks good. Yeah, so channels here, it says stereo, and that's not right. Stereo just means the usual left, right in your speakers. So I wanna click that and make it 4.0, so it's four channel, and that, that's the ambisonics, 4.0. And that's also the only one that YouTube recognizes. It won't recognize this 5.1, so it has to be 4.0. And I'm gonna scroll down and make sure I check in the ambisonics that the audio is ambisonic. And that's all you need to do. Once you've done that, you've got ambisonic audio. All your sound will stay put when you turn your head and it won't move. Um, so it'll change when you turn your head, it'll be interactive sound. And that's it. Uh, after that, you simply hit export and wait. For it, uh, for it to do its thing. And it may take a little while, depending upon the speed of your computer. Mine was fairly short, my clip, so I only have a few minutes here. Uh, but that's about it. And then this can be side-loaded into a headset like an Oculus Go, or you can upload it to YouTube. And if you've put the right metadata in it, it will show up as YouTube VR and it will play properly. Um, so that is it. That's uh, basic video editing in Premiere with the Insta360 EVO.